Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And in this video, I'm going to show you something that is fairly new to NATS. Um, they call it it's like NATS services, um, but what it's intended for is to help you build microservices. And um, I think I'm gonna do like two videos on it. Um, so today is gonna be a quick intro, and in the next video, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about it, and I think that should be enough. So let's jump right in. So I want to start off by reminding you of something that's somewhat familiar to you and then build on top of that. So when we did Go Fiber recently, um, we saw that uh, you can have you know endpoints, so like a get um, some sort of resource, like get items endpoint or post item endpoint. So each one of those, uh, that's an endpoint. And then you have a number of handlers for each endpoint. And of course you could make a request to an endpoint. Okay, so that was Go Fiber. So how is this similar, or if you're trying to build the same exact application, how do you map this, which you already know, onto the new things in the new thing in that? So again, we're gonna start off with a client that wants to make a request. So we're gonna still want to have some endpoints, something that we can reach. But here, notice how we drop the HTTP verbs. There's no pose, get, delete, that sort of thing, right? Instead, we're just going to name our endpoints, almost like function names. So we're going to say we have an endpoint that can get all the objects and create and do update, delete, that sort of thing, right? So that's the name of our endpoint. And now we need something to handle it. And so this is where we're going to have the same set of function or handlers, if you will, and our endpoints still going to call those functions. So, so far, it looks very much like Go Fiber. And so if you understand this much, because this is essentially what we've had with Go Fiber. So what is different now? So we're going to be able to make a request to a specific subject. So in this case, we can say, I want to make a request to the create endpoint. And how do I reach that endpoint? Well, I use the name for the subject that's associated with this endpoint. For now, we're going to say that the endpoint name and the subject name are one and the same. So if you want to call the create endpoint, you will send a message or make a request to the create subject. If I group a set of endpoints together, I have a service. That's what Nats calls it, right? We can see that this could be our item service, right? So all the endpoints that have to do with item resources, we put them on one service. And this is all living within NATS, this endpoint stuff. Now, previously, when we do Fiber, we created a Go application, and Fiber is just a package within our Go application. Now, there's a separation where our endpoints are living in NATS, or a client can make that request to NATS, and then NATS is then forwarding it to our application, which is where we have the logic for how to fulfill that request. Assume that oh, you wanted to add another service. Let's say it's a book service with endpoints for you know doing book related stuff, looking up books, searching for books, all this other stuff. Now, where should you put a handler? Well, that's up to you. You could put it in the same application, right? Just add um, handlers there, or you could create a completely separate application, never having to touch the first one and keep rolling out new capabilities by just deploying new applications. And from the client's perspective, they don't see anything different. They don't see the service going up and coming down or anything like that, right? They just send requests. And if there's something there to handle it, that's forwarded on, right? So really, you can do some really scalable things here. But let me show you one other thing. So let's say for our item service, and let's say we have our application is already written. And I reduce the number of endpoints here just to not make the screen too confusing. But the same concept as we have before, you have as many endpoints as you need. And let's say we fired up another app instance. We think it's going to happen. Well, within that, what it's going to see is that, hey, there's like more instances for this application, um, this item, this particular service, right? Which is this item service. And so what this means now is that you essentially introduce um, 
redundancy, you introduce scale and load balancing, right? Because when the client make a request for it to an endpoint, right? They send a request to some subject, NATS is gonna take care automatically of figuring out which one of the endpoints to send it to. Because guess what? NATS sees that hey, these two services are the same, the item services, even though they're registered by two different applications. Now there are ways in which you can sort of have some control of how you group the instances. So maybe you might want to bring up a third instance and only have requests um, be load balance between app one and two, but then if it goes to three, it only goes to three alone, but we're going to leave that out for now. So what do you get out of this? Well, imagine that you wrote a GoFiber application and you wanted to scale it. So you create another instance of it. Well, now you have to figure out how to get messages or requests from clients to either one of those things. So you have to use a load balancer. And we're not gonna talk about that. I'm just showing you how you'd have to do some extra work. And here with NAT service, you don't have to do anything. All right, let's jump into the code. So I'm gonna start by showing you the technology or the feature in that that we're gonna be looking at. And then we'll jump into the um, simple example. Once we're in the NAT website, we'll click on documentation. Then you're going to scroll down to developing with NATS and then scroll along even further. And then you can see building services. You click on that and it says, recently we have agreed upon an initial specification for a service for a services protocol so that we can add first class services support to NATS client and support this in our tooling. This services protocol is an agreement between clients and tooling and doesn't require any special functionality from the NAT server or Jetstream. So no big change there, but you get some, and, and you'll see when they said NATS tooling, just talking about the NATS command line tool, and that's a NATS tooling. And then from the client side, well, as a NAT client, you saw from the example what I showed you, how you would be able to create this thing called an endpoint and have it register in NATS. So anyway, to check if the NATS client in your favorite language um, supports the new service API, make sure you check the documentation, blah, 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 yada, yada. And there's this wonderful site called NATS by example that shows you, I recently discovered, as a matter of fact, I only found it um, a couple of days ago after I found, I was reading up on this, then I found NATS by example, and the number of example there showing you how to use NATS. And then they talk about the concepts and stuff. And I'll let you read this stuff. And I highly recommend that you go read the initial specification. It's not that long, but if you like what you see today and you intend on building um, services, you know, microservices using this um, feature of NATS, you should definitely know what you're using. And I think reading the initial specification really helps. And so, just as a quick thing before we go, um, there's a service endpoint group. And just like in Fiber, how we can group API endpoints does exactly the same thing here you can do with groups. We'll see that in the second example. An endpoint is exactly what I showed you. And a service is just a collection of multiple endpoints. Um, some other thing that you get out of the box free is the ability to get metrics about all the services and their registration and all that stuff. And we'll see that in a little bit. So, with that said, let's just jump into the code. So here I am on my command line. I'm in episode 21 and nothing really interesting there other than I've created an example one file and I've started, you know, some coding, but there's nothing here that we haven't seen before. So we can go right in. So the NATS service thing that um, we were just looking at is in a package called micro. And so, you know, we can certainly import that here by saying M-I-C-R-O, micro. And then what we can do is we can say M-I-C-R-O, micro, and you can see here, it's Nats micro, da, da, da. And if we do that, um, here, the most obvious one is um, add service. And it tells you here, add service had as a microservice, it will enable internal common services like the ping, stats, and info, which we saw on the screen just now that I said you get for free when you register um, your service. And you know, request handlers have to be registered separately using the service that had endpoint. 
We'll get to that. So a service name, version, and endpoint configuration are required to add a service. So right away, you see in the there's some convention, and it's saying like, hey, you must give your service a name, must give it some version information, and then endpoint configuration. Um, add service return a service interface along with service management. Each service is assigned a unique ID. We'll see that just now. So how do you add a service? You give it this NATS connection, which we, we have here already, and then you give it the service configuration, and then you get back a service and you get an error. So let's do that. So let's give it NATS connection, and then we'll have um, config. So we'll say, let's have a service, let's call it our agreed service. So let's agree what we're gonna write. Let's write a greeter service, so we can write greet config. Um, and since this returns a service, so we're going to say greeter service, and then an error code, we'll do that. And then of course, we'll do the obligatory, you know, if, you know, there's an error, and um, slog, you know, structure login, and return one, because we exit. Now, I said we're going to have a configuration. So what does the configuration look like? Let me close this and let's just start out by giving it a name. And so we'll say this is the greeter service. That's the name of it. Very creative. Um, let's give it a version. And let's just say there's version 0 that's 0 that's 1 that they say alpha, something like that. And we should give it um, configuration for our endpoint. But what I want to be able to do is, um, I'm, even though I said that's required, um, I'm going to leave it there, I think. I'm not gonna add anything else. Um, we could do a description. Okay, let's do, yeah, it's suggesting a simple greeter service. Hey, why not? I'll take that. So the only thing left now is to use our service, but I don't wanna use it just yet. So what I'm gonna do is say equals to, greeter and I'm not going to do any dot run or anything like that right now. Then I'll end it there. So notice I just basically um, create service configuration and create a new service with that configuration and that's it. So and here if I run my NATS command right notice how my NATS command has this micro in it. Now the one that you have might already have NATS micro. So I would suggest that you do NATS micro and you type list. And of course, I don't have NATS server running, but just try running this command to see if you at least have it because I had it in my previous command, but it was just hidden. I think they were working on this for a while and the command wasn't showing up. So let's just run NATS server. And again, that's just running this and that's it. And then over here, I'm gonna run NATS micro list again. And you'll see, notice it says no microservice instance is found. If your command, the one you have, doesn't have micro, but it's hidden or not, it doesn't matter if it's hidden, just use this. Just um, install, you know, your the latest NATS command. And you can see I just did brew updates, NATS. I'm not gonna run it again because I already run it. And then you'll get the micro um, thing. Now, what does that really give you? Well, let's just run our example and see. So. Let's do go run, and then this is our example one that made it go. And so it's running. Now we didn't see any error because it would have exited. And so now if I rerun this command, notice how it says greater service, the version, and that's the unique ID that we don't have to worry about, give the ID. And then we have a simple greater service. That's pretty much all there is to register your service. And you can get all this information. So of course you can use, um, you know, NATS itself to discover services, but this command allow you to, this is the tooling part that allow you to see what's going on. And we can see a little bit more um, than this. So for example, you can actually just type NATS micro, you can see besides list and service, you can see that info, stats, and ping that you can do for a service. So of course you could run a demo service, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. And so I can do info, and then I could type greeter. And so of course there's zero endpoints because we didn't add any endpoints to our service. And we can do like stat. And notice you get all this for free and we didn't do anything other than just create a service, right? And then you can do like ping, right? And then you can see that 
the service essentially is up and the um, round trip time was one millisecond, right? So all this, just by just re re registering a service, just think about what you'd have to build. Otherwise, if you wanted to get this sort of thing, you have to put like a parameterous um, endpoint to get metrics like how many requests were made and so on. All right, so it's time now to create our um, endpoint. So let's say we want to have a simple endpoint. Our endpoint is going to be called hello. So if you send a message or you make a request to the hello endpoint, it's going to return with hello world if you give it no data. And if you give it some data, it's going to return with hello, whatever name you send, right? Or whatever text you send. So we just need a function that um, we're going to call um, hello handler. This is going to be a handler. Think of this like a, um, a Go Fiber handler, right? And, and for now, I'll just do this. So how do I know how to add a endpoint? So I can do that and I can do um, for my service, I can say add endpoint. Notice I can add group too, but we're not going to talk about group. And so for a endpoint, you can do the name of the endpoint, which makes sense in this case is hello. And then we can have a handler and then some options for our endpoint. We're not going to worry about the options, but all we know is that we want a hello endpoint and we want this handler. But basically, if I go over here, I could see that handler is an interface. And that interface requires or expect the implementation of a single function called handle that takes a request. Now, we could certainly write some type and implement that interface, or we could just use the handler func, which implements the handler and allow you to use any function, um, basically, that has this signature as the um, handler. So with that said, so let's write our um, request handler. So let's get rid of this so we can get rid of any error. And so the problem here is we need a type that implements this handler, but we don't want to implement our a type. So we're going to use the handler instead. So we use the handle func instead. So we'll do that and then we'll put um, nil as the value here. And the reason I'm doing that now is so that um, Go does, my compiler doesn't complain, you know, syntax checker doesn't complain, and I continue to get help. And so here, remember, our handler needs to do what? Have a single parameter that is a micro request. So we can do, um, let's do har maybe that request, and we do micro that request. And there we go. And that's it. Now we can use that handler here. So we do hello handler. And now you can see our code is once again correct. Now remember what I said. If we get a, um, we get some data in our request, um, we're going to say hello with and replying to that data. Um, so we can imagine our request contain, contains a name. And if we don't get anything, we'll just say hello world. So first of all, let's see what's inside of a request. So if we hover over this, we'll see that you know you can do response to send back something to the um to whoever requested the client and made the request so we're certainly going to use that so respond with a slice of bytes we could say respond with json and some value and then it's going to take care of turn it into a json um string and send that back we can say there's an error but we also can say data to get the requested data so basically data returns the requested data which data was sent we're not going to worry about header or something. Um, subject, we're going to see about that later in not today's video, but in the next video we do, or the next set of videos. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And so let's just go. Um, the data that was what came in our request was really hard at data. That's it. And so really, that let's just expect a string. OK, so we'll just cast this to a string like that. And then we'll say if you know data is equals to an empty string, then we'll say data is just equals to world, for example. And why? Because then we can say um, the message that we want to send back is going to be, um, you know, hello, and then append data. Okay, with you know, uh, we could say. Um, okay, 
So that's what we want to do. So if we whatever if we don't get um, any data, we'll just say world. And then if we um, get some string, we'll just reply with that string. All right. And then we just do R dot response message. Now the member response needs to be a slice of bytes. So we have to do byte and then um, cast this to a slice of bytes. And that's it. That's all there is to our handler. We let's review. We create a service using micro at service, give using the connection to NAT. We give it a service configuration, which we saw was really just the name, the version and description in our case. Then for a service, we add a single endpoint called hello, and this is the handler, basically. And that's it. Now we can continue to add handlers, but remember, we want to keep this video short and it's already very long. So let's go back here. And now we're going to do stop that, rerun our code. And now if we clear here, and maybe what I'll do is move this up to here and then um, just control, get rid of this guy. And then here I'll do nats micro list again. And now you see, same as before, um, the ID change, of course, but um, we can do um, info on the greeter service. And notice now how it's telling us that we have an endpoint. So these are our endpoints and one of them is called hello and the subject basically what you're going to use to reach this endpoint. So that's the name of the endpoint. And I say that you can imagine the subject is just the same name in my illustration, but it, you'll see it doesn't have to be this way. But for now, we're going to say that it is. So the two matches up. Don't worry about the Q group. Q group is exactly what we know from general pub sub, where if you have multiple clients connected to the same Q group, how NATs, you know, um, load balance between them. And so, Statistics for this one endpoint is, yeah, we haven't made any requests yet or something like that. Uh, we haven't made any requests. And so it doesn't have any idea about the process in time. Um, it knows when it started and, you know, there haven't been any errors reported. So how do we make a request? So we just do NATS request. And here we're going to do hello. And we going to send no data. So. If we send that, notice how we get back, hello world. If we do info greeter again, you'll see it though, we have one request so far that we've processed in this group. Um, of course, we can say something else, like we can say Jane, and now we'll get hello Jane. Very easy, very, very easy, right? Um, and then what about if we do um, stats on our endpoint? And there you go, you can see at this endpoint, um, number of requests and the total across all our endpoints. If we have multiple endpoints, it will show the ID. If we had multiple services, it will show the same thing too. And so that's the basics of it, like very easy. And of course, if I run multiple instances of this same application, here we go, run another instance and I do um, stats, you'll see here, I have two instances. One then didn't get any message because you know it just started. Um, but if we sort of do some requests again, you know, like that really quickly, you know, we can then now see um, the stats and you can see what happened. The, the calls were distributed to went to our, the one that came up and blah, blah, blah. But we really don't have to think about it. Um, we just keep starting up more services as we need. And that is going to take care of that load balancing for us. And you can bring down services anytime you want. You can stop this one and notice, let's do, there we go. It still works, right? Because we still have a service. And if we look at the stats, you can see oh, one service there is now getting nine. I got nine requests so far. Of course, if we have nothing running um, and we try to, we get info, see no instances running. And of course we do this, nobody, no responder available. And we've seen this before. So there it is, NAT services for helping you build microservices very easily with load balancing, discovery, all this other stuff, and metrics. Sorry about how long it took me to get this video out. I literally tried to record this video over a week ago and all kinds of things just kept happening. And anyway, I'm glad to get it out to you today. I'm really excited about this to see how far this go. 
I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on it. Even after we finish covering it, I'm going to keep playing with it. And certainly if I'm building anything, um, try to see if it makes sense to use this because I like what it brings to the table out of the box. If you made it this far into the video and you like what you're saying and you're not a subscriber, please consider being a subscriber. Um, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and being patient. I'm so sorry that all, um, this took so, so long to get out, but you know, life. Um, and to Mikhail, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Um, Mikhail is our Patreon subscriber. If you want to join Mikhail, you want to see your name up on this list, um, sure, just go to the Patreon page and you have a number of options. If Patreon is not your thing, um, here I'm showing the slide of how many different other ways you can support the channel. If you're in the market for a Tesla product of any type, solar, car, whatever, Tesla merch, consider using my Tesla referral link that you see on the screen. Um, otherwise, take care and i see you in the next video. Uh, bye.